I have to admit, I've watched through every episode of The Office more than once. It's one of the funniest, most quotable shows of all time. Steve Carell as Michael Scott gives a legendary comedic performance and is front and center throughout the first seven seasons. But another major part of the show is the epic romance between salesman Jim Halpert, played by John Krasinski, and receptionist Pam Beasley, played by Jenna Fisher. Thanks to the natural chemistry between the actors and a well-written arc that spans all nine seasons of the show, my opinion is that Jim and Pam have the greatest fictional love story ever written. I figured this would be a good video topic with Valentine's Day coming up. While Michael's antics give the show a perfect comedic flair, Jim and Pam's romance is the narrative glue that holds it all together. The Office takes us on a full journey from their initial friendship to their wedding, and then deep into their years of marriage and parenthood. It's a story that truly has it all from lighthearted flirting to deep conflict and character growth. Here are 10 reasons why I think Jim and Pam's romance stands above the rest. Number 10. Their Friendship From the start, Jim and Pam hang out more than any other two characters on the show, except maybe Michael and Dwight. They have natural banter, know countless random facts about each other, for example, Pam's favorite yogurt is mixed berry, and they pull pranks on co-worker Dwight. My favorites are when they team up to convince Dwight that Jim has telekinetic powers, and also when they drive him crazy by communicating in Morse code. Detonator. Detonator where? Even though viewers clearly saw the romantic tension between them from the beginning, Jim and Pam are also believable as close friends. How many times have you heard someone say, I want to marry my best friend? Well, in Jim and Pam's case, they're undeniably best friends long before they become a couple. They made a mundane job bearable for one another, which is something that's very relatable. Heck, my parents met each other by goofing off together at their first grocery store job. Many times a close friendship makes a great foundation for a romantic relationship, and the show does well at establishing Jim and Pam's friendship first, rather than pushing them together as a couple right away. This leads me to my next point. Number 9. The Pacing A lot of my favorite sitcoms are guilty of the same frustrating cliché, the on-again, off-again relationship. We were on the break! <laughs> now to be fair, these type of relationships do happen a lot in real life, but having two characters get together and break up so many times can get pretty exhausting for a viewing audience. In many cases, it doesn't feel organic, but kind of like the writer's attempts to force conflict and to prolong audience intrigue. Heck, even The Office is guilty of this with some of their secondary couples. But when it comes to Jim and Pam, they created a storyline that felt well planned out from the start. It progressed naturally, teased the audience just the right amount, and slowly and carefully built the love story up to the satisfying moments that we all wanted. In season one, the show doesn't use words and dialogue to portray the attraction between Jim and Pam. It's not directly stated that they're romantically interested in each other, but we get moments like Pam falling asleep on Jim's shoulder, or Jim giving a subtle smile at his desk when Pam's mom comes in and asks, so which one is Jim? This is a perfect example of showing, not telling, and season one effectively sets the stage for what's to come. The relationship is paced perfectly throughout each season and evolves along the way. Jim goes through inner struggles before confessing his love for Pam in Season 2. She does a lot of soul-searching and growing before she reciprocates in Season 3. They start dating in Season 4. Are you kidding me? Pam and Jim are totally hooking up. They get engaged and pregnant in Season 5, and finally married in Season 6. The show effectively pays off everything it builds up. It's well-paced, naturally progressing, and a romance that has a perfect climax. That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. They overcome internal and external obstacles. Any great story needs obstacles and conflict, and this romantic story has a major obstacle in the form of Pam's fiancé, Roy Anderson. Are you trying to cop a feel or something, no, Alper? No, dude, no. Dude, hey, no, hey, dude, hey, I was hey. just, listen, whoa. Come on. God. Roy is big, brash, and dominant, which contrasts Jim's unassuming, mild-mannered nature. Roy and Pam had been engaged for three years, and given how much he takes her for granted, every viewer asks... Why does she stay with him? Because at this point in the show, Pam has insecurities, is fearful of change, and doesn't stand up for herself. As for Jim, you can see how agonizing it is for him to watch Pam and Roy together. Seeing the woman he loves in the arms of another man is a painful experience for him. The hardest moment to watch was on the booze cruise. Jim tries to confess his feelings to Pam just as Roy announces an official wedding date. Jim had earlier been asked a rhetorical question during a safety seminar about who he would save in a fire. 
In the moment, he jokingly responded with, the customer, but later, in a rare moment of distress and anxiety, he says this to the camera. You know what? I would save the receptionist. I just wanted to clear that up. Jim isn't a confrontational character, and Pam won't initially stand up to Roy, which is what makes Roy such an effective foil and source of external conflict. I'm going to kill Jim Halpern. This love triangle also forces Jim and Pam to overcome their own internal conflicts, Jim learning to step outside of his comfort zone, and Pam learning to be more assertive. And this is a great segue into my next point. Number seven, character development. Neither Jim nor Pam rely on their romance to grow as characters. They each have to grow in order for their romance to happen. Jim spent three years being complacent with both his work and his personal life. He was fine being a mid-tier worker who messed with Dwight and flirted with a woman he could never be with. He had a tendency to avoid problems rather than confront them. For example, planning a trip during the weekend of Pam's wedding rather than being honest about why he doesn't want to go. It took two seasons of working up courage, a pep talk from Michael Scott on the booze cruise, never, ever, ever give up, and a leap of faith for him to finally confess his love for Pam during casino night. What do you expect me to say to that? While she didn't immediately reciprocate, this confession was what eventually led to her calling off her wedding with Roy. Pam has one of the best cases of character development I've seen in any show. She starts as a receptionist who dreams of being an artist, is timid around everyone not named Jim, and doesn't have an assertive bone in her body. She eventually learns to stand up to Roy, as well as everyone around her. In the Beach episode, She's invigorated after walking across the burning coals that no one else would attempt. She then confronts her co-workers who take her for granted, and even confronts Jim, who's dating Karen at this time. Pam stepping out of her comfort zone in the scene is what sets the stage for her and Jim to finally get together. I'm sorry, what was the question? While making each other better is an important quality in a relationship, I love that the show makes Jim and Pam better people before they actually get together. Number six, they support each other's dreams. Pam's dream is to be an artist, and Jim is passionate about sports. In season five, Pam decides to go to art school in New York, even though it means being away from Jim for three months. While Roy had scoffed at the art school idea early on in the show, Jim was immediately supportive. Throughout Pam's time in New York, we see how increasingly tough it is for her and Jim to be apart. They talk to each other through video chat and earpieces, but clearly it isn't the same. When she fails one of her classes and mentions having to stay another semester, we can see in Jim's face how devastated he is. He could have told her to come home and forget art school, but for her, he quickly pulls himself together and encourages her to make the best decision for herself. But she ultimately makes the decision to return to Scranton and be with Jim. In season 9, Jim pursues his own dream of co-founding a sports marketing company in Philadelphia called Athlete. It's increasingly tough on Pam, who at this time is taking care of their kids while Jim is away more and more often. It's the first time in the show that we see real tension and arguing between them, but they handle it in a healthy way, particularly when Jim wants to go to Philly on Valentine's Day to avoid an argument. Pam says, I think you should stay, and I think we should fight, to which Jim agrees. This shows a willingness for the both of them to prioritize the health of their marriage over everything else. Jim later leaves his dream job and makes it clear that he would genuinely be happy in Scranton or Philly, as long as he's with her. Even though they did move away from Scranton in the end, Jim proved that his marriage to her was more important than his job at Athlete. These are very real dilemmas and conflicts the two have to face, but it never gets to the point of toxicity, and we clearly see that both Jim and Pam are willing to support each other's dreams and make sacrifices for one another. Number 5. The Wedding the wedding episodes are the absolute best. This is the grand payoff for everything the viewers have wanted since season one. There's a great mixture of humor and emotion, especially with that iconic forever dance down the aisle. From Pam ripping her veil to Dwight playing a song on the no playlist, it was easy to guess that the wedding in the church wouldn't go as planned. It's easy to get caught up in every small detail of a wedding, but I love when Jim cuts his tie to comfort Pam after she rips the veil. It was such a great way of showing that their love rises above all the little imperfections that we tend to worry so much about. Wear a tie much? They take a quick trip to Niagara Falls to get married on a boat, and it might be the most breathtaking moment in the entire show. Number four, the pregnancy announcement scene. 
The moment when they find out Pam is pregnant is something special. The actress depicts so much genuine love and joy in such a short amount of time. I like how we as the viewers aren't outright told what's happening, but we can pretty easily guess on our own. The important volleyball game against corporate suddenly means nothing, and I love the pure joy on Jim's face when he tells Dwight to send in the subs. There's really not much else to say here. It's a beautiful scene. Number 3. Their love passes every test. It's rare that we can follow two characters from courtship to marriage to parenthood, but that's exactly what we get with Jim and Pam. The show takes us on their romantic journey, where we experience every high and low along with them. We laugh when they pull pranks on Dwight, we're nervous when Roy confronts Jim, we tear up when Jim drops to one knee and says I couldn't wait. So many stories, from shows to books to movies, assume that the wedding marks the happily ever after for two characters. That their life is happy and perfect once they say I do and the credits roll. The Office, however, puts Jim and Pam through some trials and tests, particularly in the later seasons of the show, after the wedding. Kathy is brought into Dunder Mifflin as a temp, and soon proves herself to be a temptress. She goes to a work-related trip in Florida. Jim's there, and Pam isn't, so Kathy tries to seduce Jim in his hotel room. It was reported that the show's writers almost had Jim cheat, but John Krasinski was adamant about not doing that, and I'm really glad he was because, honestly, that would have ruined the entire show for me. The thought of Jim cheating on Pam even on their worst day, is absolutely unthinkable. The same goes for Pam. There's a small subplot where it's strongly hinted that the documentary's boom operator has a crush on her. Admittedly, I'm not a fan of this whole subplot. It seemed kind of shoehorned in to add some extra drama, but again, the thought of Pam cheating on Jim is simply unthinkable, and I'm really glad the show didn't go through with that. Earlier, I mentioned that tension arises when Jim is spending too much time in Philly at his new job. While the early seasons of the show are all about individual growth for Jim and Pam, the later seasons show them grow through situations that are heavy, but realistic. One scene that sticks out to me is when Jim is about to get into a taxi, and it's clear that he and Pam aren't in a good place. He gives her a small peck on the cheek, and quickly realizes how much he'd been taking her for granted. He chases after her and gives her a warm embrace, hugging her like their marriage depended on it. She initially stiffens, almost seeming to be confused at why he's hugging her so intensely. It's interesting how, despite all the confidence her character gained throughout the course of the show, we start to see some of her old insecurities resurface. She wonders if Jim is outgrowing Scranton, if he's outgrowing her. But she feels his warm embrace and remembers their vows. Love bears all things, believes all things. Love never fails. She finally hugs him back, and they kiss with a passion that hadn't been seen since their wedding. This is maybe the most powerful scene in the show, and it's amazing how well they were able to capture the realism of marriage's ups and downs. I also have to credit John Krasinski and Jenna Fisher for some superb acting here. Which leads me to my next point. Number 2. Jenna Fisher and John Krasinski's Chemistry The Office has one of the best all-around casts on television, and the characters all interact off each other well. Jenna Fisher and John Krasinski are incredibly talented actors who effectively balance humorous and dramatic moments throughout the show. They're so convincing as a couple that a lot of fans wish they were together in real life. Fisher herself had a pretty cool response to this on Twitter. If it makes you feel better, I found my Jim, and he found his Pam. They just happen to be named Lee and Emily. An on-screen romance can be tough to pull off if the actors have little chemistry, no matter how well written the story is. The writing for Jim and Pam's story and development is great in itself, but the performances from these two actors elevates the romance to a whole new level and really sells them as a couple. And finally, number one, beauty and ordinary things. Perhaps the best quote in the entire show is the very last line in the finale. There's a lot of beauty in ordinary things. Isn't that kind of the point? This line captures the very essence of The Office and the very essence of Jim and Pam's relationship. There's no grand adventure across a fantasy land, and no prince rescuing a princess from a fire-breathing dragon. Just two ordinary people with an extraordinary love for one another. This romance is special because it's relatable. We've all felt that fear of putting ourselves out there for someone we love. The Office shows us what can happen if we take that brave leap like Jim during casino night or Pam during beach games. And for these ten reasons, Jim and Pam's love story stands above the rest. 
What are some of your favorite fictional couples, and how do they rank against Jim and Pam? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a good one.